Hello and welcome to the Stephen Leeson Show with you live at the Scientology Community Centre here in Dublin. My name is Finbar Cody, sitting in for the great man himself. It's my pleasure to present to you this evening our featured guests. They have shared the stage with so many well-known and favoured artists such as Shane McGowan, Bono, The Edge, Van Morrison, Johnny Depp, The Kaiser Chiefs, Ni Niall Horan, Joe Dolan, Patrick Berrigan, Steve Wickham, BP Fallon, Mundy, and even Brezzy. They have been lauded by Pete Doherty and every top music journalist and radio DJ around Ireland, and many from overseas as well. Their musical styles have been likened to Neil Diamond, Nick Cave, The Bunny Men, Richard Ashcroft, Roxy Music, and just about every great guitar band from the late 80s to the noughties. Tonight, these gentlemen will reveal to us how two cultures from the Drumlish Bog, along with two trusted friends from the nearby Bogs of Mullingar, managed their steady ascent of the rock and roll mountain while maintaining their love of music and hunger for creating and performing it. So please, welcome Cronin. Thanks very much, Finbar. It's a pleasure to be here. This one is called Nelson Riddle after the arranger. Nelson Riddle, arrange me some. They'll make me swim in the wee small hours when my love is gone. It's all gone wrong These corporate schmucks With their big books Oh, listen to my song Oh, I've been to you How about you? My captain, yeah can't stop these tears falling We're no good for each other There's no past to recover We're like sister and brother With all the friends and you discover That you disappear Just One off of the road I found myself upon It has no fixed abode No sooner Was it like this in the sand Sitting in the September of my year My folks drink beers Talking over the band Yes, can't stop these tears for We're no good for each other There's no past to recover We're like sister and brother With all the friends And you discover that you disappear Turn on! I have never felt so much love in the movie in my whole life. Are you ready, everyone? We're no good for each other. There's no past to recover. We're like sister and brother. With all the friends that you discover. We're no good for each other We're no good for each other That's way My love comes from laying down My love comes from laying down My love comes from laying down My love comes from laying 
my love comes from laying down. My love comes from laying down. My love comes from laying down. Excuse me while I disappear. No surrender. Thank you very much, Finn Barrow and everyone. Pleasure for, it's a pleasure for us to be here tonight in a, in a beautiful room on a hot summer's evening in Dublin town. This next one's an old emigration number called Little London. It's for everyone in Drumlish. So you leave and leave for London, baby. Leaving your family for London, baby. Down the M1 for London, baby. Hope you have a lot of fun in London, baby. I will build you a little London. I will build you a little London There'll be no need for Soho Because there'll be no lonely people that's go That's just the place to be When you're not with me Spreading your nights in Stephanie Aren't you, baby? Like a new accent and a clothes you wear That's missing around Sloan Square You're gonna spend the rest of your life down there Aren't you, baby? You know what? I will build you a little London I will build you a little London There'll be no need for soul because there have been the only people that go I will build you a little London I will build you a little London There will be no need for soul Because there have been the only people that go Strings The strings are behind the curtain We've got a big orchestra behind there Everybody in Longitude alone. Thank you. We're up in this artist. Merci beaucoup. 
Thank you very much, Johnny, Mick, Fiacre, come and take your seats. So while the guys are coming, our background, we go back about 20 years. Um, I had been semi-based in Mullingar and I disappeared off to Belgium. And while I was away, the guys moved in and I came back to these new kids on the block, indie band, English boys with attitude. And uh, gradually I got to know them through my then collaborator, Vince Hughes and uh, got to see the boys playing in the stables and playing around town. They've had more manifestations of musical collaborations. It's been just phenomenal to watch them. The Rainbow Collective or something we're going to call them. So, Michael Cronin, Jonathan Cronin, Yo. Fieke, Milner. Um, talk to me. Nice to see you, Great to see you. We haven't seen each other in Thanks year for the invite. What a weird time. But let's not it's talk about the weird time, right? Good let's times, talk about the good times. Let's yeah. talk about where we're going. You played at my wedding. I played yeah. at your wedding. In, in it's the only entertainment I ever had. Yeah. Me, the only man I knew to call. Oh, my Everything God. Everything from Joe Dolan to Leonard Cohen. You know, who else could do that? Oh, that was, was so brilliant in, in Tuscany. In Tuscany. So, so yeah, that was so honor, for, like, yeah. yeah, thank you so <laughs> much for that. Actually, it's well. elbows in here. Thank you so <laughs> much for a, that. It was a beautiful dude. I played. That was like, oh, my God. Mick Cronin wants me to play at his wedding. I was all excited, yeah. Yeah, great, great, and great I'm great still night. excited that I played at your yeah. wedding. Thanks. Yeah. The thing was that we, do you remember we said we'd give you the entertainment and uh, the flights, the deal and the package. The only place we had to put you up was in with, with us in the honeymoon right. suite. That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was well behaved. I didn't peep. So much. I didn't do anything. Not else much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was supposed to embarrass you guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Let's, yeah, no. Let's talk about music. Let's talk about... So, in the intro, I mentioned the Bogs of Drumlish yeah. and the Bogs of Mullingar. So, we you boys were born we and reared in Drumlish yeah. until age 10 and 12. Yeah. I yeah. was what 10 happened? and Johnny was 13. 13. Yeah. 13. Well, 12 and a half, yeah. Okay, <laughs> 12, 12 and three quarters, yeah. <laughs> and then brought over, but my dad was from Cross Malina and my mum was from Drumlish and Leeds and she was back and forward. So, when we were brought up, Mammy had a Drumlish Yorkshire accent. So we had a drumlish Yorkshire accent at school, you know? Right. So we were always used to going back and forward because our grandparents were back from the 40s, back to Leeds and back home, you know, when you'd be, there'd be a recession on. So we left in the last recession. Dad said, come over. He went over to Leeds first. He was a JCB driver and he said, come over. But it was, we were learning guitar and drums and drumlish from Mel Crow from Busy Fingers. And there's a feeling in drumlish with music between Declan Ernie and Mick Flav and it's such a country and Irish town and Larry Cunningham up the road that you could do music, you know, very similar to Mullingar in Dublin, of course, in Cork or wherever, you know, there's big, you know, musical towns in Derry, you know, too. Like, there's a lot of great bands out yeah, there. Yeah, but Drumlish like, you know. wasn't Mullingar. Drumlish was a crossroads back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, it was really? uh, It was a small village. It was a very small village. Like, I remember listening to the Beatles in Drumlish and no one else would be, to be ACDC would be very big. ACDC and Elvis would be very big and Mel Crow actually introduced us to the Beatles, yeah, you know. Right. So that was a big thing. We went over to to England then, which was a complete culture shock from Drumlish to Leeds. And we were in a school for how how long were we in that school? It was like an immigration school. <laughs> and you, you, you wanted to bring this up. I, I told did. you the story. Yeah. Well, yeah. What, what do we ago. direct provision? You were yeah. like in in this education for direct yeah. provision. Because this is when we came from Ireland before we entered the education system Duraskin in the UK. Mm. And we had to go and answer the questions like they were checking on our English and our writing mm. and everything. We were there for four hours. Yeah. And then we were allowed to go in. But there was people Just there for weeks. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. But I, I always thought it was strange that uh, they were looking at the Irish schooling system. Yeah. And we had to go do this before. It was different we education. We had to go into the school system in the UK, you know? Bizarre. Mm. I, I, it really struck me. You two are, are like coming from Drumlish, the fields of Drumlish, yeah. into this, like, and. Yep. Yeah. Like big what? culture shock. WTF and WTF wasn't even invented at that no. time, was it? No? <laughs> was it? And you're like, but hung out with a lot of Irish descent kids over there, and we started in to the trad music. We're like supporting stocked. We started up a band with Sean Gavigan and Eugene Mallon. This is you now. I was yeah, called, the the called the tradition. We we're supporting Goldstock Shave and the Saw Doctors and Stockton's Wing. You know, what so year are we talking? Johnny? Oh, Jesus, 1988, 87, 88, yeah. yeah. Right. Started at 14. So yeah, we came from the age. middle of the bog yeah. and then like the Happy Mondays and mm. all the Smith's heads. And, and the, the Cure heads were there. Yeah. 
and then the so whole rise of the Manchester we, thing was we going just through went into it you know? then the ah. whole Britpop thing you know so we learned everything that was our university yeah and then learned that you could make money from singing Dirty Old Town in a pub at 14 yeah, yeah. and then we'd always still have the Irish yeah. communities as you know in the UK yeah. the Irish communities are always together the Irish Senate was our main hub mm. for meeting yeah. friends I, I was yeah. in two Gaelic teams yeah. you know playing Gaelic football over in Leeds you know there was 16 teams mm. at that time right in and around Leeds mm. you know I think how there's was only 10 now how was your waltz time drumming then? Oh. Always very good. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That was really? some place for waltz and those Irish Always, oh, always good. Oh my so we never, we always learned all that. You know, we were there yeah. every Sunday night. Yeah. It was yeah. always there for the show bands. Was it was like sort of osmosis. You took yeah. in the, the waltz yeah. time we by osmosis. We were more, more Irish didn't? than the Irish that were left here. Oh, do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, it's yeah. kept kept alive, like in Leeds and Manchester and Liverpool, the Irish scene, and then down yeah. to London and Nottingham. Yeah. And we'd be playing on that whole scene, like, yeah. and you'd be going over from Leeds to Liverpool and playing in the Irish Centre there, yeah. supporting the Indians. I remember that band. Yeah. I remember yeah. that show band. Yeah. Yeah. Playing yeah. the they Cavern Club they too. Were from what? They lived around Mullingar, I think, the Indians. Um, one of them did, I think, yeah. Fred Big Meyer. Chief. I know their studio engineer was Fred Meyer. Mm, okay, There's yeah. a picture of him shot across the desk with an arrow out of his back <laughs> up in, in the studio where I recorded first, yeah. I, I was in London at that time, and, and uh, I used to ha I was only young also, and I would uh, go to St. Seds Church okay, in yeah, Seven yeah. Kings, and they had a centre at the back. And, like, if the drummer was playing too fast, he'd be lynched, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They'd be murder, like, you know. <laughs> How are we supposed to waltz to this and be going and pulling out our lads yeah, yeah. on the stage? And like, that's where you cut your teeth drumming, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Well, your timing would have to be impeccable. It's to be good, you know? Yeah, no messing. Straightforward, but it better be the right tempo. Yeah. Fiacra, can I ask you a question? Of course. What's the very first thing Johnny Cronin ever said to you? No swearing now. No, no. Mind that, et cetera, et cetera, guitar. Yeah. Well, he was perfectly right, though. He didn't know me from Adam, and he was doing a gig, and I thought I was being a big fella, and we went on stage, and going, oh, I'm going to jam with this guy, you know? Yeah. And mind that. <coughs> guitar. <laughs> guitar, yeah. <laughs> okay. We started off on a bad foot, and then... No, we, got oh, well, we were talking. <laughs> we ended up talking that night, though, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, no, it was a good boundary-setting start, yeah, no, wasn't it? Well, he was absolutely right, I thought. Yeah. Man's yeah. instrument was very yeah. important. <laughs> Especially as you grew older and you had your own guitar and you were up on yeah. stage and, and lads are coming up full of drink. Yeah. Yeah. Get off of me. But then about a year later, they brought me in the road as their guitar tech. So we did Mi a few years Minding the guitar? Mind the guitar minding all the guitars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And minding them all the guitars. And restringing them and God knows what. Then a few years after that, I got promoted to bass player with the guys. So uh, it's been a lot of laughs ever since, yeah. and before, of course. Highs and lows, highs and lows on the road, you know. Yeah, like you need the lows too. You <laughs> have to be one of the busiest yeah. bands on the road. I would well, we say. were. We <laughs> no, well, yeah, and you will be again. I hope. So. I hope oh, so. Yeah, no, you will for so. sure. But like you were, you must have been doing 150, 200 gigs a year. Yeah, yeah, in and around Europe. Yeah. Yeah. All over Europe. Yeah. Where, yeah. where have you played in Europe? Which festivals now? Because you did some really cool oh, festivals. I'm trying to think. We've done uh, peace and love. Peace and love festivals. That Vest was Rock. in Sweden. We did uh, the Vest Euro Rock. Sonic. Euro Sonic. But Vest Rock. In uh, Holland. Holland. Festival. Yeah. Germany. Did you do Ross Kilda? Did you do no, Ross Kilda? No, Ross Kilda. No. no. In Denmark. I wanted to. I was wanted to. You uh -huh. know, the agent couldn't get the right fee. We did the Fesh in Liverpool a year and a half ago. Wasn't that a year and a half? That was brilliant. In Europe. That was a great festival. So We did like that Midnight Sun Festival in yeah. Norway two years in a row. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, what was that called? I can't remember. It was, was, a, it was in a town called Bratvag. Norway's yeah. a but great... Sun, the sun never set. It's a great, great place. But, lots of, but we missed we missed the road. We don't miss, uh, I suppose, the hard work. We were maybe flogging ourselves to death. Yeah, but you have good and bad gigs, you know? you know, and it's a meditation. The bad gigs are a meditation because it's easy. Like we've got a full room here tonight; it's brilliant, and <laughs> the audience yeah. are up for yeah. it. But when you, you know, it's when you've got a small crowd, it can be very hard. I remember supporting Andy White. Do you remember Andy White, Belfast Bob Dylan? I supported him in Leeds going back about oh, twelve years ago, and I said, "What was the smallest crowd you've ever played to?" And he said, three people." But in them three people, one of them was Lou Reed. <laughs> so you've always got a, is Lou Reed here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Bless Lou Reed, but you know, oh my God. you've got to watch. You never know who's Lou in. Lou Reed you plus two. Yeah, yeah plus but you two. never know oh who's man. in your audience. So And did Lou stay for the gig? Or oh, yeah, he, just, he was a fan, yeah, he's a big fan, fan of, yeah, of, of right. Andy White. Oh he's God. a brilliant singer, Andy White, from Belfast. Right. Rave on Andy White, you'd like right. him. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. But so 
you know, you know the crack with the road. I'm going to sound like the last walls here now. Yeah, we're <laughs> not. <laughs> the end. We won't go there. No. That's one of the things yeah. that really struck me about you guys was you took a, a hold of production. You, you produced your own stuff. Yep. There was other bands we uh, at the time who spent a fortune yep. on production, and um, you know it came and went. But you like really took d producing your own material in hand. I suppose a lot of the thing we, a lot of those bands are fads and they go for sounds, but we always go for classic. I suppose that might be the difference, you know, that's where we're from. Yeah. We always, that's what we always try to go to sound like, you know, try and make it sound like our record collection. Yeah, you know? and, and you do, like, uh, listening but to you. We've got close, you know, on very small budgets. I know. I know, but then you'd go and, and like, all the money that you saved, you'd give it to Carl Odlem or somebody to, yeah, to yeah. master it at the end, like. Yeah, yeah. But, but you could hear what he did. Yeah. You know, so just on the whole production thing, w uh, the videos, your videos are, are going to be, we're going to feature your videos. This is great, yeah. This, this evening, right. So we're going we're gonna to look at She Saves in a minute, okay? Yeah. Did you shoot it? Me and, if you ever notice in this video, there's only ever three of us together at one oh time. Yeah. <laughs> in one shot. I hold a four-piece band. <laughs> yeah, no, so I someone don't. Else, someone else is always carrying the camera. Uh, and we shot mainly we in Bratislava and Bratislava Vienna. we and shot Vienna. this so we were over gigging tried to save budgets we, it's not like Duran Duran here where we could go and have the separate budget so we were gigging in Bratislava so we said we'll try and shoot some footage here and see if it works we, we went looked out well it's a beautiful town have you been? beautiful no but we went off the main. wheel you know the third man in Vienna I did so the we third Vienna, man film Vienna with Orson Welles yeah. so big into the third man so we filmed some of it there didn't we and uh, uh, Fierke's getting married there soon he loved it that, that much of the time yeah. you get married in Bratislava <laughs> yeah. does your fiance know yeah. this? <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a watch yeah whenever whenever we're ready we'll uh, we'll have a watch of it and we'll see Bratislava. I was wondering where it was. Bratislava and Vienna. And Vienna. The third man. Absolutely Vienna. cool. Um, Fierkra, you're are you do you work a lot with Mick in the studio? Uh, not from the production side. Right. Just I come in, I session you're the bass side, player. Yeah. Session you're side. the bass player. Oh, session yeah. side a lot, yeah. I play bass. Well I play a lot of instruments actually on the Roll it there, Clet. What? Roll it. <laughs> yeah. I no longer have to search I've found my own church She wants me to come pray Each and every single day Beside her She tells me the golden rule Is to love her, don't be cruel I go about the dairy tea to meet by chance in the same old sea. She says that I for me. So I never thought this could happen with me and a girl from Valley Man. I'm catching butterflies like never caught. In search of his last love, she says, Not for me. She says, Not for me. Too much apple pie. Tis in the mercy of her
Welcome back. So she saves. Shot in Bratislava and Vienna. Mostly by Mick, edited by Mick. When was this? When did you shoot it and edit it? That was in 2015. 15. Right. And that wasn't your first video? No, 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 no. No, like, so when did you start making the videos? Uh, I'm trying, I've always had an interest in it, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah. Me and Brian bought a decent camera. Uh, I don't know, about 2013, 2013, something like okay. that. Okay. And that was... From Mainly on. because of budgets. Yeah. And you go yeah. to a video production place. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, like, this is the thing about Cronin. He really took control of the process. Yeah. That's because we're skin thin, man. D yeah, no one else is going to do <laughs> though, you know, Yeah, but, but there's Indian other guys punk. who are skinned who don't yeah. take control of the process. You took yeah. control of it, like, and, and you channel, you put s a That's huge amount of time, you built the studio, you know, you familiarize yeah. yourself with all the editing equipment, the recording yeah. equipment, and you did it. And you yeah. c and kept the ownership of it, and it's yep. it's just for me as a musician looking on, it's it's inspirational. It's like a great model, and for for the future, I think you were ahead of the curve, yep. because like where's it going to go now? You know, record companies don't know. Like there's not that many of them. Yep. They're not putting money in, so it's going to come back to bands to be creative. You know, yep. to twenty first century and creative. Indie scene, you know? like you know, but. We looked at bands like The Frames were a very big influence, weren't they, in a DIY yeah. way, and, and Damien Rice was an influence too, doing it. But The Wedding Present from Leeds were a very big influence. The bigger they got, the less staff they got. They, had their own, they bought their own tour bus and they were on top of the pops. The lead singer was driving it. They had one roadie, one sound man. It got smaller, the crew, when they were away from a label. And then they'd go out at the end of a show and sell their own T-shirts so people would get a photograph with the lead singer, Gedge. You know, meet him or yeah. to get signed and stuff. He was doing just that 10 years ago, like yeah. before anyone else was right. now, you know? Yeah. Right. What is it? If you want to, you know, make a small fortune in the music, you start off with a big fortune, start you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just the yeah. DIY. Yeah, but you didn't start with a big fortune. No, no, you not just at all. No. Hard. I mean, you worked from well, the ground up, served your time, played the Irish well, clubs in England. We yeah, we still know. do, like, from weddings to, like, we played, I'd say, everywhere in Ireland. I mean, everywhere. Like, you know, this is the first time ever playing here. Yeah. It's a pleasure and it's a beautiful yeah, room. But, but I tell you, we've, here. We've, we've played everywhere it's on the list. in Ireland, you know. So I see it as art and money, you know, like, say, you get money from some gigs, like the Beatles would have done covers in the beginning. And you learn from covers, you learn from yeah. busking on the street. Yeah. You strengthen your voice, you see what songs go down well with a person. You know, if it's a, a slow song or a meaningful song or a fast song, yeah. you see what the people want, though, yeah. too. You, you learn, you know, a lot from it. And also then that we pump that into the art. So it's art and money, getting the balance of, of that, which is hard with real life. Because, you know, li life gets in the way of, of music, you know, yeah. too. Like, you know, it so, does. so it's getting the balance. We all want to be... Robert Smith, or we all want to be, you know, <laughs> yeah. Elvis, but it's it's getting the time with, with family and and bills and you know life and health, you know. So it's interesting as we as we get now into into the forties. It's kind of different songs what you'd write to when you're twenty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and the record companies are signing twenty five year old bands. They they yep. still seem to be stuck back. They're at old. Uh, you're yeah. like twenty one year old. Yeah, right? twenty. Yeah. yeah, you're a yeah. slot machine. But like, yeah. there is a huge market. Look at, mm. at uh, the the Longitude Festival. Yep. Like, br back to the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. Massive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and there's no That's new music to cater for that market. Yep. But you, it's what you're doing. Like yep. you know, yep. like you you're it's mature pop music. Yeah. Yeah, well we're, yeah. we're into Leonard Cohen, yeah. we're into Nick Cave, you I know, we're into Roxy Music, we're into David Bowie, that's the kind of stuff. Bit and of punk. Johnny Cash. A little yeah, bit of punk. Well, Johnny, Johnny Rotten, Shane McGowan, yeah. we'd, we'd yeah. love them, like, and they'd be Irish descent too, like, you know. Yeah. So that Johnny Rotten would have known the crack going over, his family, over to London, you know. And Where was he from? Where is his family He's from? from? Chum. Chum. Like Chum. Chum, yeah. Chum, yeah. A Galway man. John yeah. Lydon. Tell, drop a few names. So, oh, no. so you're kind of the house band for Shane McGowan, Fiacre. What's it like being Shane McGowan's bass player? It's amazing. Like, sometimes it's, when you're doing it with him, it's kind of, oh, I'm just playing a Shane song or a Pogues, and then you're kind of like, hang on, this is the guy with you that's written the song. You know, it's kind of, I mean, I was first conscious of the Pogues when I was three, you know, when they did the Late Late with the Dubliners that time, and they blew me away when, and from that young age, you know, and so it's, it is quite a... Quite a thrill to play with Shane now, you know what I mean? Yeah. After, what's that, 30 something years, you know, of yeah. always being a fan, you know? Yeah. All massive fans, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But for me, I always go back to that late, late show in 1987. 
mm. when I was only th you know three year old, just kind of blown away with him, you know. So it's uh, yeah, it's incredible playing with him, you know. And what's he like to work with? What's he like as a singer, as a musician? Like, how is he? Is he cool? Is he like? When he's is he a bit uptight about it? Is he like well, relaxed? When he's say in the studio or something, he's an absolute pro. There's no like if he's not happy with a take or not happy with something, he stops easily and go back to that again. You might do a take 15 times or something, you know. So uh, yeah, he doesn't tolerate uh, kind of sloppiness in the studio or something like that, you know. Yeah. Well, that's what I found anyway. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he strikes me as being a very very deliberate person, you know everything about him. It may be um, not mainstream, but he very deliberately chooses who he is and how he expresses himself and yeah, what he does. Absolutely, he's yeah, yeah. He, knows he, he knows who he is. You yeah. know? He's one of the original and punks, you know. Yeah. Still, and he's very he's, he's always there. kept that. Yeah. You know, I mean, he still has the safety pins in his mm. ears, you know. Yeah. And like he's. He's, he's a thoroughbred, thoroughbred punk, you know? Mm. The real deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And as a songwriter, oh, my God. Amazing. Oh, oh you God. know? Oh, my God. But he teaches you a lot. Like, you know, he <laughs> teaches you a lot about everything. The Kaiser Chiefs. There's another band that you, you have, like... I mean, I've known the lads since I was 15, do you know what I mean? Yeah, kicking, around, again. kicking around leads, you know? Yeah. Me and Nick and... Uh, Nick has left the band now, but me and Nick and Simon in the band, we'd be in touch a good bit, you know? Right. So um, he's busy, he's been busy, you know. And like, I mean, one of the biggest bands in the world, like. The war at one point, yeah. Yeah, and they're going on at the Kaiser Chiefs. Like we yeah. supported them in the Olympia, wasn't it? That was a few years ago. did as a turn a whenever they could, you know. Yeah. But we're proud right. of them. They're a great band, you know. Big Leeds United you know. fans, all of them, so. They what? <laughs> Big Leeds United fans. Of course. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. As we all are on the stage, is that not right? For uh, well, if I cared <laughs> about football, I probably would be. I was very aware <laughs> of Alan Clark, Billy Bremner, and Obby Styles, them yeah. boys. Oh, no. Peter uh, Lorimer. One of me, one of me bigger brothers at one stage got a Leeds United uh, kit with the little leg. Remember the little leg bands? Lovely, it yeah, was yeah. number eleven, little. Yeah. And I used to like to wear them, but I was, you know, yeah, that was cool. Leeds. Good. Never had them on any other team, so must yeah. have been a sign. <laughs> it had to be a sign. It all led to tonight. <laughs> Who else have you played with? Oh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I'll see now. Um, we were lucky enough last Christmas, uh, Glenn Hansard asked us to be the house band for Late Late Show for, he was doing a big Simon community night, um, and things were tight with COVID, and he was just thinking, who can I get in to play with everyone, and that everyone would be comfortable with, like we played, Lee Man Wheeling was there, we played with him before, the lads from Codeline were there, we played with them before, like they've used our studio, Shane was there, we played with him before, we played with Glenn before, do you know what I mean, so... You two were there. It was an absolute privilege. Oh yeah, Shani you two. You nearly forgot you yeah. two were yeah. there. Yeah. But yeah. like I played with Bono before as well. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. No, he played with you. Yeah. 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 And Johnny Depp. You played with. Johnny and Johnny Depp. Depp. Well, we yeah. played with him a few yeah. times. <laughs> and Finn Barrowton for you as well. Did you, you did, yeah. <laughs> I, I, Patrick Bergen when you did the the Joe Dolan song with Patrick. Oh Darwin. yeah, yeah. Just yeah. yeah. the answer to everything we did. Like, yeah. Patrick's great. Donors. It was just amazing. Patrick's great. That he's out there. Kind of a, he's a great singer, Patrick, and Lovely he's man, into yeah. a Chris okay. Christopherson. We're going to come back in for another video. We're doing, um, oh yeah, something's got a hold of my heart. Gene Pitney. Wow. Great. So great song. Uh, like Mark Almond. So I'm kind of following on your coattails and making my own videos, and I'm looking at stuff, and I'm trying to steal footage, and I'm trying to find footage, and I'm trying to, you know, but you end up having to make it. There's a funny story about the footage well, of this video. Well, tell me the story about the footage. So anyway, we, it was drunken conversation in Whelan's uh, with Mark Greeny from JJ72, brilliant Irish band. Him and Johnny, like, oh, what can we do together? You know, come down to the studio, and we'll mess about. And we said, oh, why don't we do something that's got a hold of my heart? And I started singing it there, drunk, drunken conversation that we followed through on. And Blue it just be a drunken <laughs> conversation. So Johnny, did it, grown and drunk? <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Back in the day. That, was, back the day the day. that was in the day. That was in the so day. So the, the voices <laughs> sounded great together. Anyway, we were going to release it, and we had no footage. Uh, and then Johnny mentioned to me about the Edna O'Brien film, The Girl with Green Eyes. Mm. It's we great, great film. In it. I, lo I love Edna O'Brien, though. Like She's a... So I, as you shouldn't do, don't do this whenever you're at home. So I ripped the footage off and just started making it towards the film. So anyway, we put it up. We thought social media, no one's going to see this anyway. We just put it up for Valentine's Day. Uh, and we got a phone call from Miramax in America who wanted to sue the holes off us, basically. 
But the people that l saw that actually owned the footage, like was part of Miramax, they saw it and they liked us and let us use it. But Miramax wanted to rip us to shreds. Yeah. But they allowed it because they liked it and they said it went really, really well. And they loved the edit. They loved my edit. And, and I actually edited I edited this in Flannery's pub before a gig. <laughs> Two hours before a gig bam, on the laptop. Bam, Job done. Yeah, because wow. it had to be done before. A young yeah. Mike Murphy is yeah. in the video. Yeah. Mike Murphy when he was wow. young, like in the 60s. Wow. But, but it's a great film. Everyone should see it. The Girl with Green Eyes by I'm Ed O'Brien. It. It's on my list. After the Country Girls. It's a, it's a beautiful Brilliant kind of film. kitchen sink. I'm on it. Drama, I loved you know, it. I, I was, <laughs> you know, just watching the footage, yeah. I, was, I loved it. I it, was loved Johnny, it was Johnny's concept, Johnny's idea. He said, try this A country girl happens. going up to Dublin and she meets an older man when she's in university. And it's very romantic. You was know? it a concept or a dream, Johnny? <laughs> 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 Some great footage of Bewley's, the old Bewley's Cafe. Yeah. Do you know right. these people on Grafton Street now? Mark okay. did a great job, though. He, he nailed so it. So here Mark it is, is right? Mark, Mark Greeny shines in this. He's an amazing vocalist. We'll one of Ireland's, it, one we'll of Ireland's best singers, I think, you know. Well, we'll watch it and we'll come back to it again. So it's from The Girl With Green Eyes is the Girl movie. Miramax, we're going to sue you yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. <laughs>
Something's got a hold of my heart. What a Gene song. Pitney. What a song. Who okay. did it first? Gene Pitney. Del Shannon. Oh, Del Shannon. Okay. 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 Del yeah. Shannon did a lot of stuff first, didn't he? Brilliant, man. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. You're Dance steeped in history. But listen, we're not going to talk about Del Shannon. We're not going to talk about anybody else. I want to talk about how great Cronin are as a band. We're just sitting here listening. We have an amazing house system here. So we're watching, watching the video and listening to the quality of the sound, the quality of the vocals, the musical performance, the production. Like, where did you do all that production, Mick? It was all done in Drumlish. In Drumlish, in your studio in Drumlish. In Drumlish. Yeah. You engineered all this? Uh, yeah, and then Jerry MacDonald mixed it, yeah. Okay. So, like, homemade in the strictest of terms, and to have such an... You can play that anywhere. You can play that in any stadium in the world, and you're not going to be ashamed of what's gone on before or what's after. You can play yeah. Queen or whoever. It's amazing quality production for two lads from the bogs of Drumlish to go all the way off and do what you did and come back and be doing that. And you've kind of gone past that, and you've left it there, but I just think you should acknowledge the... the quality of the work that you've been It's great about. to hear it and see it. I haven't seen or listened to it in ages, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So well. It's aged well. It's it's aged it has aged well, yeah. It has We're aged happy, well. yeah. you know, proud and of that, like, because a, a production or a song, it's kind of like a, a suit of clothes. You have to be proud to wear it. Like, you know, that you're not embarrassed. Like, one of the first songs they ever wrote was called Scatter My Ashes on the Irish Centre Floor. I thought all the Irish centres in England would buy it. And I was singing out a tune. I still do the odd time. But I was singing out a tune for about four or five minutes. I mean, my mom, wherever we'd go, my mum would say, put on your tape, Jonathan. And oh, it was no. only like 12. I was like, <laughs> me singing out a tune for five minutes. And all the relations and our friends would be going, <laughs> oh, he's great! So he's great. <laughs> oh, he's that was a good. That was a good lesson, you know. <laughs> so then he's the, the quality control's gone a bit better <laughs> since then, you know. <laughs> yeah. Not to have them panic attacks, you know. Yeah, I, I think Mick grew up and took control of the quality, and, yeah. and like it's <laughs> lovely to see the brothers. How do you feel, Fikra, with the two brothers? Like, you, you know, you're kind of an outsider to their family dynamic, but how is that? With them Not so anymore, long. you know. <laughs> I know, yeah, I just because with them so long now, I nearly feel bad yeah. the family in a way, you yeah. know. Like between getting the dinner down in their mum's house and, you know, yeah. hanging out, you know. Yeah. Did she wash so her underpants for you yet, no? Sorry? <laughs> Did she wash her underwear yet? No, 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 I wouldn't inflict <laughs> that on her. That's okay. That's okay. But, uh, <laughs> when, you're in, when you're stuck in a van, you know, yeah. for, it could be seven, eight hours a day, yeah. Yeah. minimum, you know, you, you, have to, you have to get on. You have to get on. <laughs> you know. The but main it, thing is getting on. on yeah. Your yeah. balance is, is really lovely because Johnny is out there fronting it and Mick is behind and Mick is holding the reins and, and driving it on there really nicely. And just the quality of your work, I really was struck by it this week. You know, preparing for, for the sit with you and interview, you kind of studied you a bit and really enjoyed it and, and yeah, was cool. constantly impressed by the sound and the video stuff. So well done. Now listen, are you going to go back and play us another couple we're of tunes live? We're going to do an old cover song, are we? Yeah, we'll By the Wedding Present. We yeah. released as a single a few years ago. Octopussy, after we'll the James Bond film. So, from the bogs of Mullingar, via the clubs of London, Manchester, the Irish clubs that, if you, ne if you weren't there, you can't imagine them. They were amazing places. I believe they're still, they're still happening. Um, the boys served their time made their mistakes and and have um just turned into what's for me a wonderful a wonderful a band who are um deserved of all the critical acclaim they get and we were just talking though it would be lovely to see them making a few more bob so you can go on to their website cronin.ie.net you find them anyway online they have a bit of merchandise they have music they have albums Go and see him. So I'm just going to hand you back over, Cronin. This one's called Octopussy. Off the Sea Monsters Wedding Present Record. It's a love song for all the romantics. Bits of snow still hanging in the air But that's outside To carve your clothes and lie down 
over That's just fine Lay by the window and I'll watch for you You weren't late There was a thousand things I had to do But they can't all away Don't take the way you have Like you want to You become my family I don't need to understand Why I need you You just become my family Lay down there and watch you get dressed It's still so clear You laughed and pulled your knees up to your chest When I came near The nose I've always had to fear the worst But not that time You brought me home and you kissed me first And you were all mine Don't take the way I like you want to You become my family I don't need to understand why I need you You just become my family Oh Oh, oh that was so real Oh that was so Walker said, the sun ain't gonna shine anymore, but it is gone, it's shining today. Don't take the way I like you want to, you can come my family. I don't need to understand why I need you. Like you are to you, you become a family. I don't need to understand why I need you. You just become a family. But a David gets there, octopusy. Thank you very much. We're going to do one for the road now to Mullingar. Has anyone been to Mullingar before here in the room? Yeah, it's, got, it's a good town. Niall Horan and Joe Dolan and the Blizzards and the Academic and Finn Bar Cody. Finn Bar Cody and Polly Martin and, and ourselves. So we'll do this one. This is a song called Bury Me By Your Side. So we're going to have BP Fallon on for a John Dunn poem called Death Be Not Proud. Are you ready, BP? Death be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so for those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me from rest and sleep, which but thy pictures be much pleasure than from thee. Much
suicide so I can lie next to you Bury me by your side so I can lie next to you Yes, you love to me Yes, you love to the sea Yes, you love you have taken God from me Suburban sky, so I can lie next to you. If I fought, thou could have died. I forgot that you were mortal too. I cling to you as you cling to me. The leaves are falling. That means a sticker more and in the concrete and the child. The next one's prize and the spine. You're me by your side so I can lie next to you. Next to you. See, bury me by your side from Mullingar's very own Cronin. Mullingar's adopted Cronin. Um, boys are going to be joining me now, and we're going to continue our chat. One of the burning questions that I've had, and I've it's a subject I've brought you with Johnny over a number of years, and now that I have Mick and Fiacre beside him, I'm going to uh, put him on the spot with it again. It's a very important question, but I'm actually going to Johnny. Brilliant singing. Did you ever get your driving license? <laughs> did, I, did I ever get one? Did that, can we just turn up Johnny's monitor there? Yeah. Did you ever get your driving license? No, not yet. Not yet, not but it has, to, it has to be done. Lads, it's you're going like like to have to kick him out of the van some I of could, the days. I could drive when I was younger, you know, uh -huh. when I was like 14, but I was in a lot of crashes <laughs> in the old days, you know, like, like tractor crashes <laughs> 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 from the pub and stuff. And then I was in a, a car accident and I got scared. And then we were in a, a van accident and I got scared. But it's just not a sexy look. My, like my fiance, like when we were first caught, and she didn't know I didn't drive, and she says, "Well, I come down and collect you. Do you want to collect me?" And then I've got to go. Well, I don't drive, you know. <laughs> 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 so I've got to, I've got to do it now because we will get more gigs, you know. Well, apart we'll from get the more gigs. gigs, but also if you're independent, you know, you you, you need it. But I it's was thinking to give it's embarrassing, a, you know. Give make a break <laughs> from the driving. I'm thinking give make a break from the driving, right? Yeah. So, I hope you're now inspired for yeah, the Oh, inspired. yeah, I, I okay. have to now, like, you know. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> like, live, but Best it has to, it of the has year. To be <laughs> Good man. Good but man. Do you know what? Me old man was a driver. He was a JCB driver. Yeah. So, I think that was kind of like a rebellion that, you know, when I was younger, this is what I'm saying to myself anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> didn't want to follow. Yeah. Didn't want to yeah. follow his shoes, you know. Yeah, I'll buy that, yeah. I would well, wearing your shoes. Thank have you Have you seen much. Finbar shoes? They're the best shoes in Ireland tonight. Well, Johnny... You have your Joe Dolan. These are the Joe Dolan shoes. These are the, these did a few gigs. So shoes show. shoes are a <laughs> bit of a theme on the chat show here. Um, 
Oh God, I'm lost my track now on the shoes. You're on about shoes. Yeah, I was on about. <laughs> You're on about driving before that. You're on about driving before that. Dr- driving yeah. with shoes. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> driving in shoes. But let's go back to music. Yep. Let's go back to films. What's next, lads? What are you thinking of doing next? Have you a new album planned, or we have a new album that's been ready for a while? Is that the mini? You have a mini album, or no? Something? That was out last year. I I put that together in the box room just as a filler because we had this album ready, and we're still just waiting. We're gonna do a new single. Uh, s- I think it's coming out the second week in September. Okay. Um, but before that, we've been we're not allowed. We're not really. This is the advice I've been getting. Don't release anything properly until you know you can tour it. Yeah. So we're in yeah. Penicillin and then for March. Yeah. Yeah. So we At did a moment. remix record last year, and the remix record went well. Like it, like today, FM Paul McLoon played us, and Amory Kelly played us. We've and been getting great radio, best radio yeah. of our lives Janice at the moment. Long. You know what I mean? Yeah, you really Whatever do. Whatever release all around the world. You know, Australia mm. seems to have taken off. Italy's taken off. Wow. Um, hopefully the Imro will be all right this Christmas. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Cool. But, but we're waiting to see. Like we've got a few. There's a few new developments in the camp, and a few new people coming on board. Outside of us, like I, uh, like we've been doing a lot ourselves. We've been working with Gentleman Recordings in the Benelux region, and there's a few more people coming in for the new management as well. So, right. so finally, I might be get some time off. Oh, I'd love to see but it. You deserve like you deserve it, yeah. and and not just for your effort, because like mm. just because you're trying hard at something, that doesn't yeah. mean you deserve. T- that doesn't mean you're good enough yeah. or deserve to succeed. But you are so yeah. good. You're just great to listen to. It's just great. Br- just bad management from our side. Not, not having the management, well, which has been our thing, you know. Yeah, you do a pretty good job now, Mick. Well, it's just fighting against and having to learn the business, but. It's uh, we've got some proper people coming in now. So oh, I'm, deli- I'm delighted. So hopefully now I'll go. It's like well, Duran Duran having to write their own song, then to play their own song, then Duran Duran record the song, then they mix the song, then they master the song, then Duran Duran book gigs for the tour, then they go out and direct their own video and have to buy their own clothes for the video and style themselves and Duran Duran will be tired after that. Yeah, Duran Duran, <laughs> Duran Duran will be tired. And then having to check if there's enough money that like to get diesel for the van for the way home. Yeah. And, you know, it, uh, like it's consuming. Yep. It is. It really is consuming. Mm. Duran Duran doesn't like the tax man either. You know? <laughs> no, no, but it's our, yeah, yeah. it's our life. You have to. Like yeah, you'd be delighted to get a tax bill. It means you made some money. You know. <laughs> oh, I made money this year. Happy days. You know, but we've kept at it. It's, we, you know, what is doing it, Finbar? You know, the amount of people that talked to me and said like, oh, "I can't wait until we do it," but we are doing it. We have been doing it for years. Good friend Tosh Flood from Pugwash and the Duckworth from Lewis Mefford, and he's playing the Divine Company now. He said that to me. He says you're doing it. He said this to me five years ago. You got your studio. You're releasing your records. You're making a few bob. Yeah, but every other you know band what you're doing is it. You're doing it too. It. Once you're on the stage, you're doing it. Once you're putting yeah. out records, you're doing it. Yeah, you you are it. You know. Yeah, it just yeah. keep that mantra in the head. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's uh, like it's something that I'd have to tell myself as yeah. well. I'm doing it. You know, I made a living from music for yeah. twenty years. Like you've, you've done always, it for you've years. always been playing. I've always you know, yeah. known you doing that. You know. No, I used to be a bricklayer. No, no, that as well. But you used to be. But you used to sing well, on the know? site. Um, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, a li- just a very little bit at the beginning, but really from 1999. Uh, I I was just really gigging, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. one little bit. I had to go back to get a mortgage for a while, and uh, nice. but I've been gigging, like yeah. you know, and it's, it's great. It's a scary like thing to do, though, isn't it? To oh. like be a singer, and then to that your calendar's <laughs> open, you've you, got to fill it. You especially because you're on your own. Mm. Do you know oh, what I mean? For a lot, and I've a lot of respect for that, you know. Yeah, well, mm. yeah, that's another story. But yep. I mean, you are doing it. That's the thing. You're doing mm. it. You made but a living out of it. You're at, at the moment, it feels like that you've made a film and the film's just going straight to DVD or Netflix. Yeah. That you can't yeah. put yeah. that film in the cinema. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. That it's so interesting records. that you've been picked up in Italy. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting that you have uh, European yeah. Yeah. Uh, appeal yeah. because they have a whole different appreciation for sound yeah. and for, for music yeah. and for language. I, I found mm. it when I yeah. gigged it. You know, it's very different appreciation yeah. level. Here in Ireland, we're spoiled with great yeah. bands. Like it's a great, it's a great uh, school here, you know. It is a great school. Or like South but America with football, you know. In Ireland, when you see a band on the TV, yeah. you go, "I can do that." Over yeah. in South America, you know, when you see a football player, you go, "I can do that." Yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's a great factory, Ireland, but for music, we have to get out of Ireland, though, too. You know, you've got to come back home with the Oscar. But the point yeah. is, you're here. 
you've been doing it, you are doing it, yep. you're going to keep on doing it, you're doing it really well, right. you're, you own your own production, yeah. and, uh, and just like, I think, huge respect for that. We're, we're going to do another video now, and then we'll come back, we'll have a little bit more chat, we have two, actually two more videos to show. Right. Which one's next? Uh, Which one's next? Saves. Oh no, we've done that one, haven't oh, we? Oh, hang on a minute. See this man. See this oh, man. Oh, wow, yeah. See this man, yeah. Do you remember this one? Yeah, you haven't seen this, this in ages, though. Yeah? This was done in Norway. In, was it Bratfag? Bratfag in Bratfag Norway, yeah. Norway. Bratfag, Bratfag in Norway and in... And in what's the name of the place? Scrabog. Oh, Scrabog, yeah, yeah. Just outside <laughs> of Norway. Norway. Yeah. I recognise. And, and they're melding together quite well. But the, uh, seamlessly. Only for I knew... Scra Actually, I saw this video before I found Scrabog. And when I walked in, I was like... At the turning point, I was like... I've seen this before. I've seen this place before. And, and then I remembered where it was. Yeah, it, it really went together well. So yeah. this is a brilliant song, and uh, a guest vocalist, uh, Veronica Moran, who used yeah. to play with a brilliant singer from Legan in Longford. Beautiful singer. And uh, Brian shot all of this, didn't he? I didn't I think I did. It's a bit of a Lee Hazelwood kind of vibe, but, you know, that we're doing mm. Nancy and Lee kind mm. of vibe, that we're, you know, going back to, yeah. you know, Summer Wine. You know yeah. Summer Wine. Yeah, yeah. And also it was filmed in uh, Newcastle. Some of it was filmed in Newcastle. Oh, I saw that scene as well. Do you remember yeah. uh, Get Carter? The Get, get Carter, Carter yeah. Get, we, yeah, the we bridge. Went, yeah. We went to the bridge where Get yeah. Carter yeah, was. <laughs> yeah. And so the question is, a what's in the suitcase, Johnny? In the what's video? in the film? What's, what's in, in the, the suitcase? suitcase? Just tapes and CDs I'm trying to sell. Yes, I am. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, oh, jeez. Oh, my God. See this, man. See this, man. Here it is now. See this video, man. Enjoy your work. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back. I'm sitting here with Cronin. Um, it's kind of a retrospective on your career, isn't it? This Looking is great. Back like this is your life. At, it's a, yeah, that's it what I... With you, with you, and to, if you want to say. You know, I kind of had is a, this is your life? I, ca <laughs> I kind of was thinking about this is your life, actually, yeah. when I was... When I was considering how we were going to um, engage, I was like, yep. well, you know, in, as, as a working musician, you never get to look back. Yep. It's, all, it's just the next gig, like. Yep. It's tonight, tomorrow night, where am I next Tuesday? That's it. And, and you never get to appreciate what you've done, you know. And yep. I, I just am delighted to be facilitating your... See, it's great to see some of this stuff. We haven't seen or heard any of this in years, yeah. you know. Well, on the way home tonight, lads, give each other a pat on the back for, for a job well done. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Pat on the back, your brother. Yes. No chance. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next, lads? So we have a couple of gigs coming up uh, with the help of all these grants, these live music grants that are going on. So we have one in Drumlish in our hometown on the 18th of September and one in Dublin on the 23rd of September in the Grand Social. So all we're looking forward to that, really, and the new single and then uh, more plans for the new year. To back over to England, I'd say in November, we should be playing London and Leeds anyway, and getting ready for festivals next year. We've St. Patrick's Day booked already for next year, so we three or four festivals and just gig the record year, so. and but try and stop writing songs. But they're still ah. coming. They're still coming. I'll say I'm not going to write another one to give people peace, and it comes <laughs> again. So it's just writing songs about the 40s now, 40s and 50s. Yeah. You know, yeah. So keep writing pop. Keep, keep, we're young blues men. Yeah. You know, like if you're Muddy Waters or B.B. King or You Van said Morrison, that to me a few years you know, ago, Johnny. You said, like, well, you're becoming a, an old blues man. Yeah. I'm like... That's what you I didn't like it at first, but it's what happens, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you're an old dog on the road, and you know the road, and that's what you know. You want to be looking at Leonard Cohen or Johnny Cash or... Yeah. Kate Bush or... Or so Aretha many Franklin of them. or, you know. And, and on they go. Like, mm. their life is on the road, and it's making music, and it's just brilliant. I yep. love it. Why connect. are you looking forward to Fiacre about going back on the road? What? Tell me what. It'll open up again at some stage. Probably Turkish Grills in London. Yeah. <laughs> looking forward to that. Yeah. What? Um, it, yeah, which Turkish Grills in London. Okay. There's I a couple know. of favourite stops on around Europe for food. Okay. That we look forward to curry houses mainly. The pints okay. in Cork. The, the pints of pints and Murphy's in Cork. Um, I know it's always good. It's always good. Blah. The fish and chips. Seeing and friends and from that you've met or made around the world, you know what I mean? And seeing them again. That's it, yeah. Rather than on FaceTime, you know? That's yeah. going to be good, you know? It's yeah, going to go like they're all in 20s. That, yeah, because you do become friends with people. Oh, like completely, like, yeah. You know, genuinely connect with people. Uh, you're a transistor them. radio. I think you're a transistor radio. And the songs then touch people or they don't they connect. And the people live with the songs. The others, and you're a transistor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're just yeah. a transistor. That's <laughs> all. It's just passing through, isn't it? it like it, it is. The the music just passes through. It's mm. none of us own it. Like yeah, yeah next. You, the know, next, you know, the, the next. songs are there, and we pick them up, or we don't, yeah. and we sing them. But it's it's a nuts life, or it's like circus life, really. You know, circus. Circus. Life. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's, that's how like I see it. That's yeah, how I see it. So that's, on, that's on the to the next town and sing. Yeah. Then we'll always need a song, you know, to cheer us up. It's good medicine. Good medicine. Good medicine. Really good medicine. Bank of Love. We're going to finish off with Bank of Love. Tell me about Bank of Love. This is our last single that we released in March. What's this yeah. song about, Johnny? What's it? July it, it, now, it was it? an old love song that we was listening to Lou Reed a lot, Transformer. So I wanted to write something like Satellite of Love and listening to a lot of Richard Hawley too. And it's an optimistic song. It's a, it's a kind of like a 30, 40-year-old relationship song. Where you you know you can find love in them years, maybe more than the Buddy Holly teen years, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I, and I really so love so the video so for this because like, you know, it was done so in the middle of uh, making a cup of the tea height and of COVID restrictions in January, you know. So like we were thinking, what what are we gonna do? So we got uh, the very talented Pete Kingston down. Pete, mm. this is the one video that I had nothing to do with. This is all Pete Kingston's work, and he's a genius from out in Bray, and we work with him a lot. And if anybody's looking for any video work, mm. he's a good man to know, you know. It's, a, it's, it's an really optimistic good. song. It's hard to write an optimistic song instead of a minor key song, you know. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. doesn't sound too cheese. And when you mention the word love in a song too, it's, oh, no, can't buy me love. She loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Write yeah. Strawberry Fields forever. Yeah. But then John Lennon, then after Strawberry Fields, he wrote, love is real, real is love. You know, it's come back to it. So I think what 
comes from the heart, goes to the heart. A lot in a song. Yeah, and, and love is like, you, you know, yeah. for McCartney, again, you think the people would have had enough of silly love songs. Yeah. Oh, what I a look song. around me and yeah. I see it what isn't a song. so. Yeah. What a song. Yeah. But like, what a comeback as well to the people that were slacking them, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, mm. but like, there is no end to love songs yep. and the appeal of them, and it's great. Yep. It's great. And uh, one part of me gets cynical with age and yep. another part has become very romantic with age. Yeah. And, and yeah. like, love is gorgeous, isn't it? Yep. And And... You know, when the, all the passion and madness goes and, and you're into Tuesday, make us a cup of coffee, like, and, yeah. you know, what's for dinner and all. And it's just lovely and on it goes. And yeah. that's kind of where you're where you're coming on in the, the 30, 40 year old yeah. <laughs> relationships. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're happy with this one, though. It went, it went down well. It did the job. We've got, we got a lot, of, lot of good radio and press for this. So. Yeah. But it's I'm optimistic. You know, it's yeah. what songs you leave behind. Yeah, I'm. I'm well, really well, not surprised know. that you are. You know, yeah. and and the video is really stand out. Yeah. It is. But Kenzie um, did a great job. Yeah, of so Johnny making a cup of tea and doing the washing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, Johnny, <laughs> you're never going to get a gigs of dishwasher. No, no, no. Okay, no way. <laughs> ain't going to happen. Well, there's a Forget hole in my cup. If you know, I got a Joe Dolan cup. You know, from Olga got me a Joe Dolan cup, and it's there's no show like a Joe show. But then there was a hole in the cup. Do you lie? See it? <laughs> but there is a hole in my cup. You'll see it in the video. So okay. that's how exciting. Like. Okay. Not expense spared and this with special effects. Or thank you, Finn Bardo. <laughs> I've really enjoyed this. Go, so thanks, thank, thank, you thank you, very you much everyone, for helping crew. us. You kidding? And everybody here in thanks the to all the crew. And it's been a hooli. We've really enjoyed it. We didn't Is know that? what to, to expect. We didn't know where we were going into. Who you know, knew? like it, uh, as it, and geez, the PA and the sound system and the cameras. It's just amazing. And, and the crew. We've been treated so well with the crew. Thank and, you, you know. very much to all the crew for their patience. Thanks for Thank you, Finn Bardo. Thank you so much. We've really enjoyed ourselves. It's good to get out of Mullingar. <laughs> good to get out of the house, yeah. any, any excuse. I just want to, before we, we go over to Bank of Love, to, which is going to play us out, I just want to give a, a, a little advert, because uh, as musicians and performers, we need to make money. Like We don't have anybody giving us checks. At the moment, the government are giving us a few, Bob. Thank you so much. But like, if you want to sound, if you're in a band or you're a musician and you want to have a great, great sound, Transmission Studios, Transmission Room Studios, isn't it? <laughs> In Drumlish, they'll sort you out. The rates are good enough. Don't be mean now. Pay him, like, and he'll give you the best of his time. Great session yeah. musicians. Don't ask hand. me to make the tea, though. No, <laughs> uh, yeah, and wash your own cups, because Johnny ain't getting that gig. So Transmission Room Studios, make a look after you, and uh, Fikra will be session musician, and Johnny will be head of vibes. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you boys on the road somewhere. Great stuff. Thanks, Thanks, thank you keep so on rocking, Finbar, because we it's love you. You know, keep on rocking, and I, I will. <laughs> we go back a long way. There's no stopping, man. I took the brakes off a long time ago. There's no brakes. <laughs> we just have to keep going, get out of the way. So, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, my name is Finbar Cody, standing for Stephen Leeson. Next week, we'll have a different guest producer presenter. So, tune in and see who it is. Uh, here's Bank of Love from Cronin. Thank you. <laughs> Got a bank of love that I saved for you. Got a bank of love that I'll see us through. It was late on the night. Scott Walker died. A bank of love that I give to you. Got a bank of love. This time I'll be true. Even times when they were bleak, the future seemed to hold nothing. Or it was you and I breathing. Oh,
summers Will I be in your arms Everything depends Upon the bank of love Because I've known despair I found you And try to cope And just, just get you killed 